Hi guys, this is Lisa Listen with lisalisten.com and the blog, Are You My Cousin? Well, if you are new to Are You My Cousin or if you're just new to one of my videos, I just want to say welcome. I am so glad you are here with me. Again, my name is Lisa and I am all about trying to take the overwhelm out of your genealogy research because I don't really think genealogy research has to be overwhelming and yet I recognize that it can be. I think when you can formulate a solid plan for your research, you can learn the genealogy tools that you need to have in your toolbox to get going, and you know how to use those tools effectively, then you're going to be much more successful with your genealogy research, and you're going to enjoy it a lot more. If you've not had a chance yet, when the video is over, hop over to the website. The It's at lisalisten.com, and you may want to grab the big genie list, as I call it. You'll see it, um, a place to, to grab it from the sidebar of the, the first page of the website. And in that is really a list of um, the resources and the tools that I use and that I think are uh, helpful for your research. And the best of all, it's free. So I would encourage you to grab it and see what works for you in there as well. Okay, so what are we talking about today? All right, we're going to be talking and exploring the Catholic Heritage Archive um, with the Find My Past site. Now, Find My Past is a wonderful genealogy database. It has some fabulous records. And I think when we as genealogists hear about Find My Past, we automatically think Irish records, British records. And absolutely, they are fantastic and the place to go if you are researching those Irish and English or British ancestors. But what many people forget is that By My Past actually has records from all over the world and has a lot of U.S.-based re records as well. So they absolutely can benefit the U.S.-based researcher. Okay, so I think that's something I want to talk with you a little bit more about and explore what they actually have. And how did I get into this? Well, what I find when I get have been researching my ancestors is I invariably I'm going to hit a brick wall. We all do. And for me, one of the places that I try to, one of the records that I try to search for when I hit that brick wall, I'm going to look at my ancestors' religious and faith history, the records that revolve around those types of those types of activities in their lives and so I'm looking for church records they're not always easy to find quite frankly because it seemed like for my particular ancestors because I do research in the southern U.S. Um, many of my ancestors attended small rural churches churches that no longer exist or if they still exist that's fabulous I would pursue contacting someone at the church finding those records only to find out that the church records had been taken out of the church to safekeeping at someone's home, and unfortunately, they were lost to a house fire. Now, this didn't happen once, guys. This happened twice in the same county. I was starting to suspect my ancestors of something. All right, I'm just kidding. But it was hard to find. So sometimes researching religious records for my um, there's rural ancestors of mine is tough and not always successful. And that's when I would sometimes get a little jealous of my <laughs> researching buddies who were researching their Catholic ancestors because they seemed to find record after record in these wonderful um, genealogy um, relevant records for, within the, the Catholic records they were finding, the parish records they were finding. But here's where things got tough for them, okay? Catholic research, Catholic re the Catholic Church has guarded a lot of their records very closely. So access to those records that had all this genealogical information for someone could be tough. Okay, but yeah, they're really, they're some of the best preserved records in the world. And, um, and they span hundreds and hundreds of years. So, you know, as researchers, we so want to get into those records. Well, that's one of the th reasons that the Catholic Heritage Archives, if found my past, can benefit not only the British researcher, the Irish and the British researcher, the worldwide, worldwide researchers, but they're a very valuable resource for the US-based researcher as well. And here's what I want to, I'm gonna share my screen with you because I want to go, go in and let you see what you can find on that and the information you can find. And we're gonna kind of explore a couple of examples so that you can actually see what um, you can find. So give me just a moment while I share my screen with you. 
Okay, so here's the screen, and this is, I'm in the um, Catholic Heritage Archive section of the Find My Past website, okay? And just to get a, a nice overview, hang on, let me move this out of my way so I can see what's going on here, okay? Uh, you get a nice overview about what's in the collection, and this is a great thing to read, to learn about more about their collection, um, what they have, and where they're going from there. So you can kind of, gives you a great idea um, vision of what's going on. In fact, right here in this paragraph, you can see that in 2017, okay, we had the um, parish reg the registers from Philadelphia. And if you go a little further down in 2018, they have announced that they are having records from the Archdiocese of New York, which is a huge project. So this is an ongoing project. And they have further plans to also publish materials from the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Cincinnati, Chicago, Wilmington, Toledo. So as you can see, this is, they are early in their project. It is an ongoing project, but they are gonna be a valuable, valuable resource to researchers um, going forward. You can absolutely search for that, search the website, search this Catholic Heritage, or this Catholic Archives right here from this site, but I'm gonna show you another site in just a moment. You can check out what they each have a little bit further. But I wanted to show, to show you down here something really important that I thought would be helpful to you is how to learn more about researching Catholic records. Because your ancestors may have been Catholic and you may find them in those records, but if you are not Catholic, you may not fully understand the types of records that were created and what those records mean. So these would be good sections and good information areas for you to explore so that you understand what you find when you find it. And another thing I really wanted to show you, and we'll talk about this a little bit further in the video as well, is this is a fabulous article about common Latin terminology. Because some of these records are gonna be in Latin, if not a lot of them. And if you're like me, Latin is not something you speak very often or ever did. So um, understanding how to decipher those records can be important for you there. All right, so let's get started. I wanna jump into the records themselves. I wanna show you how I search for a record. As I said, you can search directly these parish records, records directly from this site, or I'm going to show you an, an alternate way to do it. You can go up to the top to the search bar, and you're going to click search, and birth, marriage, death, we're looking at parish registers, and click that. Okay, so here we are at the, at the main search page. So I'm going to type in um, a name that I'm searching for. Her name is Miriam. Whoops. It's hard to type when people are looking. <laughs> Talbot. And I'm particularly interested in Miriam's marriage. Um, this is somebody I'm looking at. This is somebody I want to find her marriage certificate, see what I can find information. I know that she was married about 1917 or so. Okay. You can fill in here the, the location of, those, of, of the event if you want to. You do not have to. Um, it's totally up to you if you're not 100% sure where they were located or if you don't have a lot of information, you may want to leave it blank. You're going to get a wider, um, a, a lot more hits. You may have to sift through or you can leave it the way it is. Either way is fine. All right, let's see. I'm going to hit search. I'm just kind of going for that broad search. Okay, so I had seven results and this top one is the one that I'm particularly interested in. So Miriam A. Talbot, the event did, oh, did occur in seven, 1917, so I'm looking pretty good. So when you go over here to the right, you're going to see these two little boxes. So this tells me that there is an original record or an image of the original record, and there's a transcription. It also tells you that I've looked at this one previously, too. That's a nice little help when you're researching if you're going through multiple records or need to go away and come back to your research to know what you've already searched as well. So let's take a look at the image of this record. Okay, I'm going to, let me enlarge this. This is from the Philadelphia Roman Catholic Parish Records. And I think she's in this one. Yep. So she's in this top one right here. Okay. As you can see, this is in Latin, but that does not keep me from being able to gather really important information here. Uh, from this because I can, a lot of it you can recognize and if you can't, you can absolutely go to a transcription shortly here in a minute. So this is a wonderful thing. We do find Miriam Talbot. She is marrying a gentleman and I, I know I'm not gonna say this right, Gulturum, W.K. Hill. Um, and look at this. 
okay? It's gonna show her parents. It's gonna show where she was baptized. So this is the family, she's being baptized in County Limerick. That tells me that the fa this family is from Ireland. It tells me what diocese. This is an excellent place. I now know where they were from. I can go back to those records or search out for those records as my next step of my research. It tells me the day that the wedding, that she was baptized or the approximate day because it looks like they're not quite sure. There's a question mark right there. But it gives me an idea of, of a birth year, perhaps. Um, gets me closer to that. Shows me the um, groom. It shows me his parents, where they were from. Again, from Ireland. They were from County Mayo. Shows me their diocese. So if I'm looking for the Cahill family, I'm going to start there but on my, when I jump across the ocean into, those re into researching those records. And gives me a birth date for him as, or a baptism date for him as well. Also down here at the bottom, you're going to notice it looks like there were two people who were pre presenting the child perhaps for baptism. Again, I'm not... Um, 100% because I am not of the Catholic faith, but my ancestors could have been, this is something I would have to look at a little bit further. But the important part being, there are two names here. Another female whose name is Talbot. This is somebody I need to know about. Just like every record that you research, whether it's a census record, a will, a land record, a, a parish record, you want to know the identity of everybody mentioned in that record and how they were related to the person that you your ancestor or how they are related to your ancestor because that can lead to more ancestors all right so that's that's that but now if I'm really having trouble reading this document if I'm really struggling with the Latin I can view the transcription Ta -da! this is great I love that family of find my past does this so they've transcribed <laughs> They've transcribed it and they've used it, put it in English for me as well. So I can get the name, I get the father's first name because it was kind of hard to read and it looks like it's Joannes Talbot. Uh, mother's name was Ellen Casey. Again, we have the dates. We get the spelling of her husband's name, her husband's parents down here. Let me come on further down. The location of the marriage, which is, we know it was Philadelphia because we're looking at the Philadelphia records, um, but the parish is Holy Cross. It gives us the deanery, um, which gives us the county, so we, and then the area of Philadelphia. So this is really very, very helpful for our research. It gives us a place to look for more U.S.-based records in this area, as you can see. Now, I, need, I wanted to point out about, oh, and one other thing is you come down here, you're seeing more, some more things about your, cite, your citation or your source of where this came from. It gives you your, your number. Um, and all of that. So you've got your um, citation information here as well. So what I want you to recognize here, if you remember a moment ago, I pointed out the two names that were at the very bottom as potential people who needed to be researched um, further as well as being some part of the family or somehow related to the, having some type of relationship to the bride and groom. They are not on this transcription. So a tr that is one thing. It's not a word for word transcription. It's kind of um, almost more of an abstract, I think, out of the records. So don't stop at just the easy part to read, which is this. You want to always make sure if it's available to pull, look at that original record and make sure that you're getting all the information you need. And just remember, a transcription is done or an abstract is done by a person who can make mistakes. So you want to um, did they spell the name correctly? Did they interpret the name correctly? You want to be able to use your eyes and do your own assessment as well. Um, so I wanted to share that. All right. So I also want to show you, now let's go to an older um, birth record, which I think is a really interesting to, to look at. I'm going to go back to these birth, marriage, and death records. Let me get that name real quick. Okay, so this is somebody I've been looking into, and she spells her name a little differently. So let me make sure I get this spelled. It's, it's not Catherine, it's Kath... Uh, I'll show it to you. <laughs> uh, there we go. I think it's a misspelling, but I've actually seen it spelled this way. Catherine, kind of a version of Catherine. Catherine, M, and her last name is Talbot as well. All right, now she would have been born, if I'm, I'm thinking... 
around 1846 was where my original research took me. So we're gonna plug that in. Let's narrow her down a little bit more. We're gonna look under, let me pull that down, the United States records. There we go, because I know she's in the US, but I wasn't quite sure exactly where. Oh, that didn't work out. Let's try that again. Let me take that out, make sure I'm spelling her name correctly. C-A-T-H-E-R-N. Let's see if that's it. All right, let's try that again. Sorry about that. I think that's it. Oh, it was her birth. That was the birth year. That's it, her birth year. I had put it in the wrong section, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. So right away, I have 185 results. Ah, oh, that's, that's a lot, but I think I'm going to be able to find her pretty easy because her name was spelled so a little differently. Okay. And there she is at the very top. Okay. So... Again, I know that I'm looking, she, it turns out she was from Philadelphia as well. It tells us her location. This record was taken in St. Patrick, Norristown, Pennsylvania, here in the US. So let's go over and check her image of this record. Okay. As you can see right away, this looks really different than the other one we saw. So I'm gonna enlarge that a little bit. She's over here on the second page, I think. Um, there we go. It's a little hard to see, as you can tell, it, but here it is right here. Okay, so September 20th, she was bat the baptism of Cath Catherine, I cannot say, Catherine M. Um, born 18th, I'm not sure, this is in Latin again, I'm not 100% sure what that says, but I know that na the natum would be indicate her birth. It gives her parents right here, and it also gives sponsors as well, two sponsors. So this one, I would, as a researcher, I'm going to document this, and I'm also going to go to that transcription because this is a little more difficult for me to read, um, particularly the Latin piece of it. Okay, so again, we do have the year. We do, I can confirm that birth date was the 18th of um, September, 1846, that she was baptized in on September 20th. That her, th these are her parents, Guillermo? Guillermo? Uh, Talbot and Margarita Mayer. Okay. Again, tells me her parish, tells me the deanery, where she was. Notice this record also does not indicate who those sponsors were. They were also listed. That is, and those are names I would want to record so that I could then look for that. So you can start to see what you can find on these records. Now let's go back. One other thing. I wanted to show you something on the results page. So when you get a results page, and this is not somebody I, I'm researching, but as you can see, you just have a transcript for this particular record or this one. These are records that, um, the, and these, there's, there's not an original image for that. That's okay. Um, and you can certainly absolutely use those records as those transcripts for their records to get information from. But you want to indicate when you're doing that, that you are using a transcription, that you're not seeing the original record. Um, that said, check back because more and more records are becoming, are coming online. Sometimes the transcriptions appear before the actual image does. So there you have it. Um, let me come back out of here. Hang on one second back into, there we go. I'm back. There we go. So as you can see, Find My Pass has a lot of records for the U.S.-based researcher, particularly if your predecessors were Catholic. Okay, and that's what the focus was today. But they have other records as well. But this video obviously focused on those Catholic records because they're new. And with the recent announcement in 2018 that the New York Diocese um, has that Find My Pass will be releasing some of the New York Diocese records as well because that's, that's huge for people. And just remember, the plan is, once they get the New York records, okay, they have other, they're gonna also be looking at Chicago and Cincinnati and Toledo and Baltimore. They have other UK records that they're gonna also be releasing into this Catholic Heritage Archives. Um, Liverpool, 
Middlesbrough, UK, the Northampton, and plus they're like at all the um, archdiocese and diocese in Scotland. So if you are researching Catholic ancestors, Find My Pass is the place to be for you. Okay, check them out. Now, if you are listening to this video before April 16th, 2018, absolutely, I want you to check out the blog post that goes with it, and I will, I will put a link to that below. Okay, Find My Pass has a special offer for Are You My Cousin readers um, that is good until April 16th, 2018. So I'm going to encourage you to hop over to the blog post, read the blog post. It's, I give you more information and you can find that special offer at the very bottom. And I'm so appreciative that by my past would do that. That said, I, what I do want to do under full disclosure, I'll let you know, I am an affiliate for find my past. Okay. Um, this is not a sponsored post or a sponsored video. Okay. All the, imp all the views, personal views, those are all my own guys. They don't, they don't ask me to say anything. I, this is completely all of my own opinions and my own views. So I just want that up there and to be out there so that you guys have that full disclosure. If you want to, you're absolutely able to check out my full disclosure um, on my website. It's under at the very top. So have a great day. Happy ancestor hunting, guys. I want you to be able to be successful in your research. And until next time, bye.